Now at 7, we're learning more details about an early morning shooting in Lexington that injured two men. A man accused of killing a Lexington woman more than a year ago pleads not guilty. And a fallen police officer's wife is fighting to keep her husband's killer behind bars. This is WKYT This Morning. Hey there, I hope your weekend's off to a great start. It's still early, but thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Mark Barber. Yeah, we better enjoy these warm temperatures while, we, while they last because we're hearing that snow, Arctic uh. ether, I don't want to hear that, Mark. Air, it's all on the way. I don't want to hear it. I know, many of us don't, but I Mike know. Linden is here. He's got you covered. He has <laughs> everything you need to know to prepare for this week ahead. So what are we looking at, Mike? Well, Mark, no major changes just yet. Right now, sitting in the mid to high 40s, things are quite comfortable based on where we could be this time of year. So you've got to take what you get, at least right now, with most spots nearing on the low 50s. At 7 o'clock in the morning, we owe a big part of that to the cloud cover, keeping things nice and insulated like a blanket for the surface. But if you look off to the west, the clouds will soon bring something else to the party, that being rain showers later this evening as we head into Sunday with some snow showers after the rain as we move into Sunday morning as well. It remains to be seen whether or not it will be cold enough for us to see any light accumulations here moving forward. But we have another shot at even more snow on the way on Tuesday with an Arctic air mass moving into place. A lot changing, but the theme of it is cold here moving forward. I'll take you through the next few days in about 10 minutes coming up. Time to brace for that cold. Thank you, Mike. This morning, police are trying to find the men who shot two people on University Avenue. Yeah, police say one of the victims has life threatening injuries. We're still working to get all the details on what exactly happened overnight. WKYT's Mike Byer is on the scene covering our top story this morning. Lexington police are still on scene here at University Avenue, where the sixth shooting of the year has happened since, uh, well, since 2016 has begun. Police are talking with neighbors, anything they can do to try and get more information into this recent shooting. Here's what we know right now. Police tell us the shooting happened shortly after 3 a.m. right here in the 200 block of University Avenue, which is just minutes from the UK campus. This is where police say two white men dressed all in black with masks walked up to a car that had two people inside and began firing. Police say after the suspects fired off the shots that they took off on foot, but not before injuring the two victims. Police tell us one of the people inside the car was rushed to UK hospital with life threatening injuries. Police say the other victim in the car was only shot in the hand and is expected to be okay. Now, we recently spoke with police who told us they believe the suspects may be heading towards the Nicholas, uh, Nicholasville Road area. Police say they will continue to have a heavy presence there as well as right here in the area around University Avenue, where, as I mentioned earlier, they've been talking with neighbors patrolling the area in and around here at University Avenue, just anything they can to try and locate these two suspects. Once more information uh, comes in, we will share that right with you. For now, live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Thank you, Mike. And a bond and status hearing for three men accused of killing a UK student has been delayed. Defense attorneys asked for that delay yesterday, and the judge is allowing it. Lexington police have charged Ephraim Diaz Jr., Justin Smith, and Roman Gonzalez Jr. with murder. Police say the victim, 22 year old Jonathan Kruger, was shot during a robbery on Maxwell Street this April. Diaz's attorney has a message for Kruger's family this morning. These words will sound very hollow, but we're very sorry for your loss. The next hearing has now been pushed back to February 5th. During that hearing, police are expected to testify for the first time about Kruger's death. Attorneys think the case could go to trial by the end of the year. A man accused of killing a Lexington woman more than a year ago has pled not guilty. Alan Burgess was arraigned on a murder charge yesterday. Lexington police say he shot Kiera Green on Scottsdale Circle in June 2014. But he wasn't charged until last month. Green's family says they never gave up hope that someone would be charged in the case. Nervous, shaken, I mean, but filled with joy because we've been waiting on this day for a little bit over two years and we're just ready for justice to be served. Police say three other people were also shot at the same home where Green was killed, but they survived. They say Burgess had a long standing feud with one of the men at the home. Burgess also faces unrelated charges in Bourbon County. The Jesmond County Sheriff's Office has released a sketch of a man wanted for robbing a pharmacy. 
Deputies say the man robbed the Kroger Pharmacy on Bellarive Boulevard, Boulevard just off Harrisburg Road last week. They say he wore a surgical mask at the time. Earlier this week, deputies released surveillance video of the robbery. They say the man ran off with two bottles of Oxycontin after giving the pharmacy a note saying if he was given the pills, no one would get hurt. A Kentucky police officer is recovering this morning after being shot while in the line of duty. Now, this happened yesterday in Shively, which is just outside of Louisville. Police say that Officer Wes Singleton was trying to serve a narcotics warrant when a suspect opened fire. Police say Officer Singleton was shot four times in the lower body. He was rushed to a hospital, and while his condition is not known this morning, we're told he is stable. Police say other officers did return fire and they hit the suspect. Police say Officer Singleton has been with the Shively Police Department for years. Now, a man who has been convicted of killing a Lexington officer will soon be eligible for parole again. But the officer's wife is fighting to keep him in prison. Officer Brian Derman died in a hit and run crash back in 2010. Glenn Donahai was later convicted of second degree manslaughter and sentenced to 20 years. He's already been denied parole once. But Brian Derman's widow, Brandy, has now started a petition to keep her husband's killer behind bars. She hopes the legal system won't let her down. The victims are put through this every few years, have to relive it all. When does it end? When is there justice for us? Donna High's parole hearing is scheduled for February 16th. We put a link to Derman's petition on our website, WKYT.com. With colder weather in the forecast, some people in central Kentucky will spend the weekend making sure those less fortunate stay warm this winter. Now, even though today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, wives of police officers in Montgomery County are turning the support onto the group who is in need. They have set up a cold weather clothing drive for the homeless, and they need your help. We want to make sure that their clothes and have mittens and scarves and accessories, you know, to, to keep themselves warm in the, during these winter months. The items go to the Montgomery County Homeless Coalition. If you would like to donate items, you can drop them off at FOP Lodge 56 in Mount Sterling. The wives behind the blue will be collecting donations from 9 until 5 o'clock today. And they'll certainly need all they can get, especially with that cold snap coming yeah, in. It's a great cause. Yeah. Well, still ahead on WKYT this morning, who says heroes have to wear capes? <laughs> Find out how one little dog managed to save her uh -oh. owner's life when we come back. Big changes on the world in the world of weather on the way for the bluegrass. Coming up, I'll show you what lies ahead of us for the weekend and into the work week ahead. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Mike Linden. Uh, the weekend is here, not really feeling much like winter at all, at least this morning. And it looks like you'll have at least one more day of late fall feel moving forward before things get cold in a hurry. Right now, looking at the Defender radar network, seeing the cloud cover slowly filling in over the bluegrass, and that is keeping things rather isolated, insulated, I should say, at the surface because cold air is on the way and in a big way. First, ahead of this cold front, we're looking at quite a bit of moisture working its way into Kentucky, and that will arrive later this evening and overnight into Sunday. More than likely, you'll be asleep when the rain gets here. It's what's after the rain which could shake things up here moving forward. Check it out. We'll go through the day hour by hour. Start you off at 8 o'clock this morning and we'll head into the afternoon. Note the time up there, 4 o'clock. So this is right when you would expect your high temperature here in the winter months. The mid to low 50s, right around 55, 54 or so degrees. More than likely, we won't get to 55 thanks to the cloud cover, but close to it nonetheless, 53 or so degrees for most spots. Now into the evening hours, continue to watch the clock here. This is midnight as we head into your Sunday. That is when the rain gets here and in a big way. Could be looking at some heavier rainfall over the Frankfurt area and over the BG Parkway and I-64 West, but it's what lies after the rain, which is really the talk of the town here this time of year, the chance for some snow showers. Mainly what we're looking at is what would to be rain turning into snow showers simply because the air behind this cold front is indeed cold. But look at the temperatures above freezing in most spots, and that would really cause most of this snow to not stick at all at the surface. While we may see some accumulations in some spots, 
Mainly what we're concerned with is after the snowfall, because regardless of whether or not we do see accumulating snow, we're still talking about moisture falling from the sky nonetheless. And with temperatures plummeting into the mid-20s in only a few short hours after the snow showers get here, we could be looking at some slick spots developing on the roadways. That's something to watch out for Sunday afternoon and into Monday as well. Once we lose that cloud cover, look what happens to those temperatures falling back into the teens for your Monday morning. Again, as far as snow goes, this is by the end of Sunday, mainly looking at this corridor here north of I-64 that could be getting in on close to about a quarter of an inch or so, but it all hinges on the temperature. And speaking of the temperature, Arctic cold air is on the way for Tuesday, and that could be the one big blast that all of you winter lovers out there have been waiting for to not only cool things down significantly, but potentially bring us some more accumulating snow. That's on Tuesday, but for this weekend, quite a difference a day makes, huh? From today to tomorrow, from the 50s to the 30s, from mostly cloudy to snow showers. We're going to see it all here in Kentucky within the next 24 hours. But it's Tuesday. If you're really waiting for the cold to get here, that'll be the day for you and into Wednesday morning. That first cold snap is a big one, too. 20 degrees there from today into tomorrow. That's, that's, that's huge. But again, can't undersell Tuesday into Wednesday. The potential for wind chill sub-zero. That'll be the first of the year. You know, and I know all parents are out there. Is there going to be a snow day? Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, we have to continue to watch things moving forward. Overnight, tonight, and into tomorrow, the snow might not even stick. Tuesday, hey, with, with temperatures overnight in the teens, some snow, that could mean some sticking. We'll have to wait yeah. and see. And maybe some icy patches on the roads as well. <laughs> Kids are dancing. Well. Woohoo! Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, maybe the parents are excited too. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Mike. And as we all know, heroes can come in different shapes and sizes, including four legged and furry. One elderly Louisiana woman credits her dog for saving her life. Take a look at this little hero here. 74-year-old Christine Hudson nearly lost her home in an electrical fire. She nearly lost her life, too, if it wasn't for Sandy, her 8-year-old peekapoo. She clawed me on my neck. She started, like, howling. I said, well, maybe she needs to go outside, you know? Maybe she's sick. So I got up, and when I opened my bedroom door, I heard this and the house was just horribly full of smoke. Wow. Firefighters arrived within 10 minutes. Hudson says Sandy led her out of the home. The experience is prompting the family to ask all seniors to turn to pets, not just for company and friendship, but also for an extra set of senses. And that really came in handy there. Yeah, what a cool story. I'm going to have to mm. show this to my husband. Yeah. My daughter and I really want a dog, and he's like, no, no dogs. Well, that's why. It's a safety precaution yeah, as well, maybe. Yeah, I have to sell it would save our lives, honey. Right, <laughs> that's the <a> cell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the time now is 7.15. And uh, when we come back on WKYT this morning, one woman is in shock after learning that her husband has been accused of trying to help ISIS. More from her when we come back. Good morning and welcome back to WKYT This Morning. The time is now 7.18. And the wife of a terror suspect arrested in Houston in total shock this morning after her husband was accused of trying to help ISIS. Jessica Wiley has her reaction. I'm, I'm not good because my, son, my husband is in jail and my, my son is still not good to just cry. He needs his dad. Hanin Al Kokis was blindsided by her husband's arrest. The 18 year old says Omar Al Hardan left their Southwest Houston apartment yesterday to answer FBI questions and never returned. Federal agents then knocked on their front door. They took it, everything, and my phone, and my iPad, everything is took it. I don't know why. Al Hardan is charged with helping the Islamic State. The 24 year old illegal resident who came to the U.S. as an Iraqi refugee in 2009 made his first court appearance today. The government also says he committed perjury, lying on his citizenship application, denying he was affiliated with a terrorist organization, and also denied having weapons training. These are serious charges, uh, and we anticipate that uh, uh, the evidence will support all the allegations that we've made in this case. Al Kokis and Al Hardan have been married two years. They have a 10 month old boy. His last job was as a limousine driver. Prosecutors told the court he did odd jobs. Al Hardan has two sisters in Jordan. His parents and three brothers are all in the U.S. You don't work with ISIS. Nobody like ISIS. Me, no like ISIS. My brother Omar, too. The family says they were grateful to leave war torn Iraq for the U.S. 
Al Hardan's wife just wants to see him in person. He not do anything. He, he, he love America. I am love America too. I'm sure the question for her this morning becomes, how did I not know that my own husband was involved mm, with that? It's a tough story. Yeah, it really is. Well, the time now on WKYT this morning is 721, and there's still a lot more ahead this morning. Sports is next. It's the Cats and the Crimson Tide from Tuscaloosa tonight. We've got a preview on the way in sports. Temperature sitting right around the mid-40s right now, but things are bound to be quite different 24 hours from now. Coming up, I'll take you through the next day. Coming up. Good morning. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. The cloud cover slowly beginning to blanket the bluegrass state, and that is going to have an effect on us in two ways. One should keep temperatures nice and insulated at the surface. So the upper 40s and lower 50s we're feeling right now, those should stick with us through the next several hours. On the other side of things, the clouds also bringing moisture with it. Right now, most of that moisture lies over the Paducah area and over western Tennessee. We are looking at that rain working its way eastward, and we'll see it overnight tonight. But look what lies behind that rainfall. Some snow, and that is the million-dollar question. Will we see that snow snick sticking? Well, we might have an answer for you here coming up in just a moment. Right now, we're looking at temperatures sitting right around the mid to high 40s. Look what happens as we head into this afternoon. Most spots getting back into the mid 50s, thanks to the cloud cover and that southwesterly flow. Overnight tonight, though, when that rainfall gets here, that is going to be the first shot at active weather for us. More than likely be asleep when the rain gets here. Overnight, though, as we head into Sunday morning, the back end of that storm brings with it some snow showers. But look at the temperatures. Not necessarily cold enough for us to see snow sticking at the surface. So while it is likely we will see snow showers over in central and northern Kentucky, whether or not we'll see accumulations sticking, that remains to be seen. Potentially some light accumulations, but nothing piling up by any stretch, much like what we had about a week ago where we saw snow but didn't really see it after it fell. This is where the main concern lies for us. As temperatures fall into the mid-20s for your daytime highs on Sunday, we'll already have seen quite a bit of moisture, whether it's rain or snow, falling from the sky since midnight. So that could mean some slick spots driving on Sunday afternoon. A big shift in temperatures in just 24 hours. Brian Milam is back in next with news on the Wildcats. An important game tonight for the Wildcats as they go into Alabama trying to right the ship after a terrible performance on the road earlier this week at LSU. Marcus Lee spent most of that game against the Bayou Bengals in foul trouble. He ended up playing only five minutes. Lee said the Cats came back hard in Thursday's practice. We came back fighting more than ever. Uh, our practice was extremely hard. Uh, it was a lot. There was a lot of talking, communication, because that's something we were really struggling on on away games and in games in general we don't talk to each other as much and so that's something me uh, us as the, a team tried to do better at. Tuesday night John Calipari did not get anything out of the big guys. Alex Poitras, Marcus Lee now counted on heavily every game out. It's not like having Carl Towns and Willie Cauley Stein anymore. Now it's like every day and that's hard. That's you know everybody wants to be in that position. But the responsibility to be ready, to be prepared, to be ready to do to, for a dogfight, every not filing out of games, not getting, not walking, not hide, no, every day, and it's hard here because this is even worse at this place when you're on this stage. So the Cats stay on the road this weekend into Tuscaloosa to face the Crimson Tide, now coached by Avery Johnson. Six o'clock tip on the SEC Network. Former Lexington Catholic baseball star and Mr. Baseball winner Ben Revere on the move again last night, traded by the Blue Jays to the Washington Nationals. Revere joining the Blue Jays last season and was a key cog in their run to the playoffs for the first time since 1993. The Nationals were seeking to replace Denard Spann, who signed with the Giants on Friday. Ironically enough, Spann and Revere played side by side in the Twins outfield. So good luck, Ben, in the nation's capital. That's a look at sports. Enjoy your weekend. Now at 7:30, we're learning more details about an early morning shooting in Lexington that injured two men. Police are looking for two men this morning who they say robbed three people in their car in Lexington. 
And police are still trying to figure out exactly what caused a fight to break out between two middle school basketball teams in Pike County. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome to WKYT This Morning. I'm Mark Barber. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Tonight's the big night. The big Powerball drawing $800 million on the line. Can you believe it? I can. And you know what? Yes, I'll pull this list. up. We even have a little office pool going on here. <laughs> 25 names on this. Michelle's on it. I'm on it. And somebody behind the scenes here, they did some quick math for us. After taxes, if we were to win it, which likely will not happen, odds we know are one in 292 million, but that would be 13.5 million dollars after taxes. I know. Like think crazy. about that. But you got to think positively. We're going to win. We're going to yeah, win. It's right there. Those are the names. The you know names, who's right? not on this list? Mike Linden. Mike, oh. why didn't you join this pool? Because I want to keep all 800 million. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> some honesty in the way. If I center. win, you might not see me here tomorrow morning, but again, those odds, who knows? You have much better odds at things getting a lot colder here over the next 12 hours. Right now, 45 degrees in Lexington. That's pretty good. Considering that it is the 9th of January, we should be looking at temperatures a lot colder than what we're currently feeling. The clouds certainly have something to do with it, keeping things nice and insulated at the surface. But twofold, the clouds will be bringing us some active weather overnight in the form of rain and looks like some snow showers as well moving into Sunday morning. Tomorrow's not the only chance at us seeing some snow showers. We're looking at even colder air working its way back into the bluegrass on Tuesday, which could not only make for a snowy Tuesday into Wednesday, but potentially feeling wind chill sub zero. If you've been waiting for the winter, it looks like it is well on its way here over the next few days. I'll show you what lies ahead coming up. Big changes coming. Thank you, Mike. This morning, police are trying to find the men who shot two people on University Avenue. Yeah, police say one of the victims has life threatening injuries. We're still working to get all the details on what exactly happened overnight. WKYT's Mike Byers on the scene right now, covering our top story this morning. Lexington police are investigating the city's sixth shooting of the year that happened right here on University Avenue. If you take a peek above my left shoulder, you can see police are still on scene. Here's what they've told us. Police say the shooting happened just after 3 a.m. right here in the 200 block of University Avenue, which is just minutes from the UK campus. This is where police say two white men dressed all in black with masks walked up to a car that had two people inside and began firing. Police tell us both of the men inside the car were struck by the bullets. Police tell us one of them was rushed to UK hospital with life threatening injuries. Police say the other victim in the car was only shot in the hand and is, and is expected to be okay. Please tell us after the suspects fired off the shots that they took off on foot, possibly towards the Nicholasville Road area. Now, police are still on patrolling the Nicholasville Road and University Avenue areas. They've also been talking with neighbors to gather any additional information, basically anything else that will help them or that will lead them to the capture of these two shooting suspects. Also, they urge anyone that may have uh, been around, that may have heard the shootings, saw anything, to contact the department. For now, live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, Lexington police are looking for two men who robbed three people in their car. The robbery happened around 1.30 this morning at the intersection of Morgan Avenue and Oak Hill Drive. We're told the two robbers were wearing ski masks. They took jewelry and money from the people inside that car. Police say they fired one shot in the air and then they took off. An argument between two brothers turns into a stabbing in Laurel County. The Laurel County Sheriff's Department says the altercation happened yesterday on Curry Road, about 10 miles east of London. They say Brian Napier was stabbed by a knife by his brother Brent Napier. We're told Brian also hit his brother over the head with a wooden object. Police say Brian was taken to the Manchester Memorial Hospital and later transferred to UK Hospital. They say Brent was treated at his home. The sheriff's office is still investigating the altercation. Investigators are trying to figure out what led to a deadly crash involving a school bus in eastern Kentucky. It happened yesterday morning on US 119 in Harlan County. These pictures are tough to look at. Police say a car crossed the center line and hit the bus head on. They say the driver of the car, 32 year old Bridget Mallory of Lynch, died at the scene. Police say the driver of the bus, along with the teacher's aide and a student on board, were taken to the hospital. 
They were treated and released. Police say they're not sure what caused Mallory's car to cross that center line. And new this morning, a Central Kentucky teenager has died after a crash in Woodford County. Now we've learned that it happened yesterday afternoon on Woodlake Road. The coroner is identifying the victim as 17-year-old Misty Ward. For sales, police say the Frankfurt teenager lost control of her car in a curve. The car went off the road and hit a tree. Ward then died at the scene. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office has obtained an arrest warrant for a man in connection to the disappearance of a teenager. The warrant is for 25-year-old James Wimmer of Indiana. Deputies say he's connected to the disappearance of 16-year-old Travis Bryant. They say Travis disappeared from his foster home yesterday morning and took most of his clothes with him. Now, we all know competition can be fierce out on the basketball court, but maybe things got a little too heated at the Belvrief versus Phelps Middle School basketball game. Take a look. The fight was caught on camera last night. Cell phone video shows how quickly the situation spiraled out of control. Pike County Superintendent Reed Adkins says at least one coach was involved in the fight. As you can see, they're spilling out onto that basketball court. He says he's making sure it does not happen again. I will say there will be penalties handed down. Uh, we certainly are not going to tolerate this kind of behavior in our school system. Atkins says the school board's attorney is now involved as they work to figure out what started the fight. He says one person was taken to the emergency room, but they should be okay. The Pike County Sheriff's Office is investigating the fight. A Somerset couple says thieves broke into their home and stole from them while they were sleeping. Zachary Grigsby says he and his girlfriend didn't realize what had happened until they woke up. He says the thieves got into the home by kicking in a basement window. He says they stole televisions, clothes, a wallet, his girlfriend's car, and even food from the refrigerator. Grigsby says the burglary has shaken him. I just kept waiting to go to bed and wake up and just be normal again, but next day just got worse, and the day after that kept getting worse. Somerset police say someone later spotted the stolen car in Eubank, and that led to them searching a nearby house. They say they found many of the stolen items inside. Police charged three men with receiving stolen property. They also arrested a woman on drug charges. Kentucky now has a few more years to get the state's driver's licenses up to federal security standards. The Department of Homeland Security announced that people from Kentucky and other states who don't have the latest driver's licenses can continue using their current licenses at airport security checkpoints until January of 2018. The Real ID Act of 2005 requires a driver's license to be issued by a single state agency. In Kentucky, court clerks issues them, but that doesn't meet the federal requirement. The Kentucky Democratic Party is looking for a new leader this morning. Last night, State Party Chairman Patrick Hughes announced that he's resigning to fully resume his law practice. He says he will help with the transition to a new chair. Hughes was selected as party chairman about a year ago. His resignation, we're told, comes after Republicans won most statewide office races last fall. The GOP is also close to taking control of the state house from Democrats. Now, of course, we are all working on New Year's resolutions. It's about that time, right? Oh, yeah. So, go ahead, Mark. Is you, there you anyone take that it. you want to try to sell? <laughs> I know there's a few for me. That well, taco cleanse sounds yummy. That taco cleanse. We've been talking about it all morning. That's ahead on WKYT this morning. Taco cleanse, that sounds great, Mark, but what also sounds great for all those winter lovers out there is a big change in the weather. Coming up, I'll show you what lies ahead of us for the weekend. Coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with Mike Linden. Well, the weekend is here. January 9th doesn't feel much like January 9th at all this morning. Things starting out in the mid 40s, feeling more like a late fall day rather than a day here in the midst of early winter. Thick clouds filling in over the bluegrass, and that is keeping us insulated at the surface, and that should pretty much lock in our temperatures that we're feeling this morning for the next several hours, the mid to high 40s and lower 50s. But along with that cloud cover, a lot of moisture well on its way. You can see out ahead of this cold front and low pressure system, quite a bit of active weather stretching from Louisiana northward into western Tennessee. That's what we'll see overnight tonight. See what's behind it there? Some snowfall, 
Well, that's what we could get in on moving into Sunday afternoon. A lot going on as that active weather works its way toward the bluegrass here over the next few hours. But here is your hour by hour forecast to take you through that time. We'll start you off in just a about 15 20 minutes from now. This is 8 o'clock this morning. Temperatures in the mid to high 40s. Into the afternoon, getting back into the mid to low, warmer than normal 50s for this time of year. But look what happens as we head into the evening hours. Beginning at around 7 8 o'clock tonight and through the evening, we'll be looking at some rain showers continuing on and potentially getting a little heavier, as noted by the yellow color there along six western I 64 by midnight tonight. That will hang with us through the evening hours and into Sunday morning. It's at that point that we will see that rain convert over to some snow showers. But look at the temperatures, at least with this particular model run. Temperatures wouldn't be cold enough for us to see anything sticking to the surface. And that is very important, especially when you're talking about snowfall. More than likely, this will be just like a few days ago when we saw the snow. But in about an hour or two, you didn't really see much left on the surface. What really is our major concern here moving forward is look at Sunday afternoon. Temperatures slipping below freezing and into that mid 20s range. And regardless of whether or not we see snow, we'll have seen quite a bit of snow and rain up to that point. So the, the streets will be wet. There will be a lot of moisture at the ground. And with temperatures this cold, that could make for some slick driving moving into Sunday afternoon with temperatures in the mid 20s. Not to mention, when we lose the cloud cover overnight Sunday and into Monday, temperatures slipping into the mid teens. That is chilly and should be of amongst some of the coldest temperatures that we have felt so far this season. Snowfall estimates up near about a quarter of an inch. That is, again, what we could see, but whether or not it remains to stick at the surface, that is the million dollar question. What we will see here moving into Tuesday with another shot at more snowfall is Arctic cold air. And that is really going to set the tone here Tuesday into Wednesday, which really could cool us down to the point where if we do see additional snowfall, which does seem likely on Tuesday, well, then we could really be talking about some snow sticking to the surface. So right now we're looking at just some rain beginning later this evening, converting over to snow showers overnight. Could again make for some slick driving Sunday afternoon. And then we get even colder into the work week ahead of us. I mean, tomorrow, today rather, looks like the only day above 50, even 40 degrees before things really cool down for the next few days. It's a big drop off. 20 degrees it, from today to tomorrow. Wow. Don't want to hear it. And then next week ourselves. it's going to be 70, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> odds are no. probably not. Much like yeah. the Powerball, those odds are not good. <laughs> probably not one in 292 million, though. No. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. You got it. You know, Mike's a foodie. He'd love this next story. If yeah, cutting yeah. out those sugary drinks is a way to lose weight and stick to your New Year's resolutions, you're going to like this. A group of self-proclaimed taco scientists in Texas have a new plan. These taco scientists are calling it the 30-day taco cleanse. Mm. And they say it's quite healthy. Almost sounds good, too. Alicia <laughs> Neves takes a look. I can be justified by eating tacos every day. No, we're not kidding. A juice cleanse? Who wants to drink juice all day? This is a taco. Four taco scientists in Austin have unveiled a new cleanse that might be easier to stick to. It calls for a 30 day diet of tacos, tacos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But there's a catch. The tacos have to be vegan. If you give me a taco over a hamburger, I might have to take that taco. The Taco Cleanse book contains over 75 vegan recipes that reward your body with plant based foods. It's uh, very easy to convert into vegetarian or non meat for everyone else who are on their own special diets, too. And San Antonians love their tacos. Thousands flock across the street from Viva Taco Land to snap a photo with the words most of us can agree with. The tin can food truck sits outside. I tried to uh, switch up the menu and do some gourmet sandwiches, but here, here at Taco Land, I'm getting so many requests for tacos that I think I have to redo the menu and add some more tacos onto the menu. If you want to lose weight, you'll have to count calories. But nutritionists say, with this emphasis on vegetables, it's a step in the right direction. If you can wrap um, wonderful vegetables uh, in, and beans, beans are so good for us. If you can wrap those inside maybe of a lettuce leaf or maybe choose a corn tortilla, um, I think that that is a great option. It's the last diet you might ever need. It's authentic, it's real, and it's love. <laughs> like, that's tacos. Mark, could you do this? I don't know. <laughs> Mike Linden is shaking yeah. his head yes. Absolutely. We've got Mike off camera. He's in it. But would you? 
Oh, yeah, I think so, although I'd, I'd like to have meat in it versus right. the beans, but I could, and I could adjust. And the 30-day, that's a long time. I think maybe I could do it for a week, but 30 days, that's that a long time for And you know what? Our new producer, Lindsay Travis. Lindsay, the rule is if we're talking about food, you got to bring it in. Right. Right? Well, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's what's up now here on WKYT at 746. We'll have more news right when we return. Good morning. We hope you're enjoying the weekend so far. Kentucky's new state treasurer, Allison Ball, has only been on the job a few days, but she indicates she'll take a different approach to things. Ball, who appears with us this week on Kentucky Newsmakers, sees the position as a watchdog and says she will look closely at expenditures before cutting any checks. You've said that you want to be more aggressive, make the treasurer more significant, and be a watchdog uh, for the state's uh, financial dealings, uh, make things more transparent. Right. Uh, what are some of the things that you'll be looking to do in those regards? Well, Bill, I'm glad you used the word watchdog because that's what I used the whole time in the campaign. And uh, you know, you mentioned earlier people have been sort of frustrated with the office for a long time, and I think it's because it's been a rubber stamp position, and it really shouldn't be. It's it was created in the Constitution. It has a constitutional obligation to be that watchdog. On our spending, making sure that the only money that's that's spent, the treasurer is the one who cuts the checks for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The only money that goes out is money that is constitutional, appropriated correctly. It's statutory, and so you really do need someone actually keeping an eye on it. And I was actually meeting with my staff yesterday about something that I kind of think may be a constitutional issue, and so we're figuring out exactly what to do with that legally. Uh, so you want somebody who's actually taking that role responsibly, and I do want to do that. I do think uh, being a watchdog also means increasing transparency. Uh, Ohio has done a fantastic job uh, on transparency up there. Their, their treasurer has created a great website, and I'm looking to try and see what we can do in Kentucky. They spent a lot of money on theirs, and, and we are uh, not as financially ready to, to spend lots of money, but, but there are things we can do. And uh, I want to I want to increase that transparency. By the time the state uh, cuts a check, uh, it hopefully has been through some approval process. It's me. <laughs> but do you plan to you know to have some process where you check uh, as yes. many expenses as you can? Yes, there are some things that we really do need to be keeping an eye on. And there's like I said, there's one thing in particular that we're we're looking at uh, legally. And um, and once we've come to a decision on that, well, I'll let you guys know what we decide. But yes, you actually do need somebody who is keeping an eye on it. And you know, as a bankruptcy attorney, uh, I'm very used to keeping an eye on finances. I'm very used to fixing financial problems. So this is the sort of thing that I'm I'm well trained and prepared to, prepared to do. So you're saying that as a state treasurer, there will be times when if something uh, doesn't pass the smell test for you, mm -hmm. as far as that your signature going on a check that is to be cut. Uh, you'll hold it up. I do think I've got an obligation to do that, yes. As a bankruptcy attorney, you, as you said, you've seen people in tough situations, uh, sometimes of their own making, obviously. Sometimes, and you've yes. helped them to, you know, create a budget and get on a better footing. Kentucky's retirement shortfalls are, are just uh, horrific at this point. Uh, how will you assist in trying to uh, help with those? I'm glad you mentioned that too, and that actually is one of the main initiatives that I'm going to work on as state treasurer. The treasurer sits in the Kentucky Teachers Retirement System Board, so uh, I have some direct relationship to, to that pension system. The other pension system, which is actually in, in greater trouble, the, um, the one that's for m most government employees, that one is, is in pretty bad shape. I don't have a direct relationship with that one but I, I want to from an advocacy position so we're already working on uh, some ideas that we have for pension reform um, and I do want to make sure we're, we're transparent and shine a light on the way it's done now you can see the full interview with Ball and hear how higher education leaders want to make a deal to try to get more money. Kentucky Newsmakers will air tomorrow morning at 6 on WKYT and it repeats at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. I'm Bill Bryant. Stay with us now on WKYT This Morning. So we may be past Christmas, but one kid got a gift I think would make grown men jealous. I know like me? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you and Mike and a Millennium Falcon Playhouse. This is really <laughs> cool. Take a look at this. Wow. They're calling it the full Falcon experience. Thanks to his dad and grandpa, Knox Davis can explore the galaxies in his playhouse. They started back in mid-November, oh, and after a few goodness. trips to the hardware store and ordering other parts off eBay, hey, you've got yourself a Millennium Falcon. Man, that is cool. What a good dad and what a good grandpa. 
setting the bar high there. You know, I was just thinking the same thing. Go dad. That is <laughs> awesome. I don't know if my dad would have the patience Look at that. to build that. I could for watch me that video oh of that playhouse grown forever. Grown man jealous. Yeah. Grown man jealous. And I could really here. talk about that all morning long, but we've got to get to you because you're tracking the chances for snow this week. Well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. We are we are talking about some snow potentially into tomorrow morning. Mainly what we're looking at are rain showers changing over to snow showers, so kind of a messy mix into Sunday morning. What really has our concern though is moving forward is this big drop in temperatures because whether it's rain showers or snow showers, we're still talking about moisture and that could create for some slick driving Sunday and moving forward into Monday. Another shot at more snow on Tuesday as well. Winter's here. This is our Say last it ain't chance so. of the nice Say warm it weather. We'll so. miss it. Thanks, All right. Mike. Well, thank you, Mike. Nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. The news is always on WKYT.com. And don't forget, CBS This Morning is up next. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.